What do you think? We already discussed about the issue of underrepresentation. So what do you think could be done, both by the European institutions, but also by the young people to address this long-standing issue? Um, I would like to talk about increasing participation and representation. Um, so you talked about the Conference on the Future of Europe, for example. Um, just for the viewers that are maybe not up to date on that, that was a year-long, um, basically, plenary discussion, right? Um, Citizen-led, um, went from April 2021 to May 2022, and citizens came up with proposals to the European policymakers, right? And I feel a lot of also on how to reform the institutional framework of the EU. And then we have the proposal specifically 36 to 38, which deal with um, also youth participation and generally um, increasing participation of European citizens in European politics. And what was said, like important points were also this, um, increasing political education through a redefinition of school curricula, for example, um, in building uh, digital platforms where information is collected and is concise and accessible, maybe also platforms that actively give the opportunity to participate in the maybe collecting of ideas for policymakers or other way around. Um, then um, that there should be more news coverage on the political um, decision-making process in Brussels, but also on the elections, like doing the elections, the coverage of how's the voting going, what's going on, what is at stake, which policies are um, relevant for the next terms. These things should be more discussed and also in, an, in a credible and as impartial as possible, you know, in the in the national media. And I also feel that you could invest, and this is what you are doing with the European Youth Forum, in capacity building of young people, put them in situations where they practice their skills to actively be a decision maker or be a policy maker. You have this a little bit, um, you have, for example, this model European Parliament or model United Nations is a very specific type, but it's basically um, simulations of um, of parliament or of other governing bodies, and you as a young person can go there and practice what it would be like to sit in the shoes of the policymakers. Of course, this is not enough, because you should not just practice, but you should also be heard in, in, in effect. So um, maybe youth parliaments could also be an idea with proposals directly influencing the policy making in the um, yeah, national European Parliament and uh, yeah for the underrepresentation I think there is a lot to be done about the party culture as you said. Th there are youth parliaments actually it depends on the countries that are already there the problem is again uh, the connection between youth parliament and the actual parliament yeah so yeah that's the issue there really <laughs> yeah you're completely right. So um, I mean would you like to add something with regards to this? Well, I think essentially what we have also seen through our discussion here today is that the reasons for underrepresentation and lack of participation are very, very complex and there's multiple of them. And essentially they need to be addressed at all levels. Like you, for example, mentioned that we cannot underestimate the importance of local level authorities, for example. And I believe that this is very important, that those issues, those problems are addressed at all levels, at local level, national and at the European level. And essentially, the problems are very complex. They start within parties, for example, with candidate selections, but also with awareness, with knowledge. And those are all issues that will have to be addressed in the future. And I think this is really a challenge, and there's quite a lot of them to overcome for young people. But I'm confident that we will be able to increase participation and reach proper representation for young people in the future. You already mentioned about the disconnection between the youth enthusiasm in political activities and also giving out their voice. And the disconnection happens to the European institutions, which translates to less of outcomes that are being said by the European youths. What do you think could be then um, 
a solution for this uh, long term. And I would like to give you the final opportunity to say uh, something with regards to the underrepresentation issues. The underrepresentation issues is, first of all, facilitate all the logistics and accessibility, let's say, of young people when it comes to voter registration, how to vote, where to vote, give them the information, um, and therefore give them the tools to actually participate and, and give their vote. Lowering down the age of 16, making the voter outcome a lot bigger, getting engaged in politics earlier, so we have more political leaders under the age of 30 um, later on. And of course, the EU youth test to actually make policies sustainable, long-term, and also having young people in mind and, and centred um, so young people don't get left behind. Mm, so yeah, in a, in a very, 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 uh, in a nutshell, I would say that would be my closing words. Uh, we have lots of initiatives. We have all papers, um, opinions, well, not opinions mainly, but more youth form opinions, let's put it that way. Um, and general recommendations, and we will have them on our website, and of course, you know, at youthforum.org, so there's lots of information on there of all of our campaigns, Vote 16, the youth taste, uh, banning unpaid internship, that's just, again, one of them, we have so many around them. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. We work on, uh, on lots of different things, uh, a lot of variety. Thank you very much to all our distinguished speakers for today's discussion. I am actually not as a European, but I'm still very much excited to look forward of how the turnout would be for the upcoming election. And we hope this time we will have higher voting turnout and higher representation. 